The murder of six-year-old John Benet Ramsey has remained a mystery for over 25 years. And it's a story that I covered for many months from Boulder, Colorado, right after it happened. John Benet was found dead in her family's home the day after Christmas 1996. There's now a new renewed push to bring the case to a close coming from John Benet's father, John Ramsey, who will join us in a moment. He announced that he's petitioning Colorado's governor, Jared Polis, to allow an outside agency to test DNA connected to the decades-old case. Now, John Bonet was found strangled to death in the basement of her family home on December 26, 1996. John Bonet, who had competed in beauty pageants, had been reported missing hours earlier after her parents found a bizarre and clearly phony three-page ransom note demanding more than $118,000 for her return. An autopsy revealed that John Bonet died of strangulation and a blow to the head. The Boulder City Medical Examiner reported an eight and a half inch fracture on her skull. John and John Bonet's mom, Patsy, were considered suspects and almost got indicted after a grand jury recommended charges. But a lot has changed since then, with most who have followed the case closely, believing that the authorities jumped to conclusions and falsely implicated the parents. John Ramsey announced that he was starting an online petition to allow an independent lab to test DNA evidence tied to the case. He says that the Boulder PD has not worked fast enough to test DNA evidence. The petition cites multiple instances in which law enforcement worked with private labs to help solve cold cases, including four Denver homicides from the early 1980s that were solved earlier this year. The Boulder Police Department responded to the petition saying that they have conducted a thorough investigation that they have followed up on more than 21,000 tips and interviewed more than 1,000 people related to the case since it began. They also say that the case has been under constant review by federal, state, and local agencies, and that local police have consulted with DNA experts from around the country. Former Denver District Attorney Mitch Morrissey assisted the Boulder County DA's office in the late 90s on the case, and he says that the petition is, quote, ridiculous. Giving it to somebody that has no idea about the, the facts, where the DNA was found, uh, what type of DNA that you have, I think is ridiculous. To assume that the Boulder Police Department is not looking at the most current, the most cutting edge DNA methods to be used in this case, I think that's ridiculous too. But Colorado Governor Jared Polis seems to be open to the Ramsey's request. Earlier this week, his office released a statement saying, quote, the state will review the petition and look into how the state can assist in using new technology to further the cold case and to identify John Benet Ramsey's killer. Joining us now is John Ramsey. John, good to see you again. It has been a long time uh, since I have uh, seen you. Um, thank yes. you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. So Thank you what do you me. think what do you think an outside agency could do regarding the DNA that the Boulder authorities can't or won't do? Well, we know there's at least four or five items that were uh, originally taken from the crime scene and submitted to Bodie Labs, which is an independent agency, uh, 25 years ago. And for some reason, they were not tested. I think the Boulder police pulled them back. I don't know why. Those items are items that the killer probably came in contact with, and they need to be tested. However, they need to be tested by the latest cutting-edge technology. We were told by the FBI just recently that they don't even have the latest technology, that you have to go to an outside lab that really specializes in the latest DNA technology. The last DNA that was tested in our case was about 12 years ago, I think, when Mary Lacey, the uh, the new DA, took the case over uh, and had some other items tested. That's 12 years ago. And technology has advanced so far. The government does not have the latest technology. I've been told that by the government. So it only makes sense to go to where, you know, DNA technology is, is evolved rapidly. And um, well, let me, that's let me ask where you. we gotta go. Yes. Let me ask you, John, because the Boulder police chief addressed that. He responded and he said, quote, our investigation with federal, state and local partners has never stopped. That includes new ways to use DNA technology. We've always used state of the art technology as it has been at the forefront of this investigation. 
every time the DNA technology changed, we worked to make sure the evidence could be tested. Now, I understand why you wouldn't trust the Boulder Police Department back in the day, right? I get that. No, but no. Is, it still, is, it, is it still at the point where you just don't trust the Boulder Police? Yes, that's still the case. Um, we don't think they have the resources, uh, the talent, or the time, or the interest to really aggressively pursue this case. Um, it, you know, Lou Smith, who was the detective brought in by the DA, legendary retired detective in Colorado, yep. used to tell me, John, I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna get this guy. He worked on it his, the rest of his life. He sadly died about 12 years ago to cancer. And I went to visit him in hospice. And he said, John, if this case stays in the hands of the Boulder police, it probably will never be solved. And that was the first time I ever heard Lou mention, say it probably won't be solved. So it's, they've had 25 years to mess around yeah. with this, have not achieved anything. I know they're not using the latest technology. We were told, frankly, by one of their detectives, we asked, why aren't you testing this evidence that we know is at the crime scene? He said, well, we don't want, in effect, he said, we don't want more evidence that would conflict with our theory. All right, that well, if that's, if that's the case, if that's the case, that's obviously uh, very disturbing. Um, I, I want to yes. ask you about your, your former lawyer, uh, Lynn Wood. He was a great defender and advocate uh, for you for, for many years. He's now become a sort of leading voice on the, the fringe right. Are you still in touch with him? No, I haven't talked to Lynn in probably a year or so. Um, he was uh, certainly was an advocate, very passionate advocate, and uh, but I haven't talked to him since he uh, got into politics. <laughs> got into politics is a soft Those way of saying it. it. Yeah. Um, so, all right, John Ramsey, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the program. I, I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Dan, for having us on. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.